starts now. The United Nations is 75 this year, and this anniversary is perhaps the institution's most appropriate time to consider how renewal might work. Renewal has actually been at the forefront of the priorities for the UN for about the last half decade. Renewal on many fronts. In its most literal form, the entire complex of the United Nations headquarters in New York City was completely refurbished during the 2010s while preserving the original design schemes. Temporary structures, endearingly referred to as IKEA buildings, served as meeting and office space, while the complex was gutted and given a retrofit. Renewal also considers the UN's failures, and indeed, with the many successes, come some failures. Admitting failure in one area, and there are more than a few, should be reason to explore ways toward betterment, and this has been a thrust over the past several years. The need for renewal in some areas shines more brightly. Critics are rightly concerned with the relevance of the Security Council. As it was constructed, this body echoes the concerns of World War II. The concerns of this planet have evolved since then, and so too have the players on the world stage. A Security Council is needed, but must be redefined. The UN is perhaps the most bureaucratized institution on the planet, but this need not be negative if the administrative apparatus serves ongoing renewal and doesn't simply exist to exist. And herein is what the UN first and foremost must be committed to doing, ongoing critical evaluations and introspection. To this point, we look to the current exercise spearheaded by the Secretary General that asks thousands of stakeholders what the UN should be, what it should look like, and how it should grow in the future. Preliminary results from the exercise show that people around the world continue to value the UN, that the UN has an important place and has a vital role. My own experiences at the UN for several years echoed this sentiment, notably when I would meet people who viewed the UN as an instrument of hope, as something embracing values bigger and more inclusive than those of the governments from their home countries. I found this hugely inspiring. At the same time, it was impossible to attend a meeting or simply walk down a corridor without confronting the myriad acronyms, initialisms, and other assorted code names that were designed to shorten and describe parts and activities of the UN. One needs a dictionary of terms and acronyms just to navigate a single day. Military organizations are notorious for creating this kind of inner language, which tends to create a culture unique to the organization, but inadvertently, a sort of exclusivity of the institution, which is exactly what the UN is designed not to be. So renewal is greatly needed. And I think in substantial part, the role of renewing also rests on individual countries. It's of little use to criticize without contribution to finding better ways of doing things. And sometimes that starts with personnel. In this 75th year of the United Nations, we also learn that Canada's newest ambassador to the UN is Bob Ray, a man who really should have been there long ago. His appointment shows that the government is committed to actively finding better ways of doing things. Mr. Ray is a respected diplomat whose work spans the global map of conflict. For the first time in quite a while, we have a global activist who has a reputation for listening then making balanced and reasonable recommendations based on that ever-important mix of idealism and pragmatism. Member countries worldwide need to be doing this, not just filling an ambassadorship or seeking membership on this body or that. And sometimes it takes a smaller, soft power country like Canada to step up and lead by example. It's happened before. We're precisely at the point where we ourselves are reevaluating our role and potential in global affairs, considering what we think Canada is and really what Canada is and should be able to do. If there was only one piece of advice for our new permanent representative in New York, Excellency Bob Ray, it is this. Renewal at and throughout the UN must be ongoing. As Canadians, we know all too well that precious institutions can quickly stagnate without constant renewal. 
And this characteristic places us as a natural lead on today's and future ongoing efforts at building an even more inclusive United Nations for tomorrow. So happy 75th to the UN, and congratulations to Mr. Ray. Visit stephenchristiansen.ca for more episodes. This podcast is available through premium streaming platforms, including Anchor, TuneIn, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. I'm Stephen Christiansen. Thanks for listening. complete.